Right then guys, just before we get going into the video, just wanted to share with you some statistics. Last month, I had 17.1 thousand views. Well, for the last 28 days, this is 17.1 thousand views. And thank you to all of those who watch. It is really appreciated. But only one and a half percent of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you wouldn't mind, just give it a quick click. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out massively. Enjoy the video. Hi right, there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today you're joining me in a BMW 640D M Sport Grand Coupe. If you're familiar with the channel, I've done a couple of BMW previously and you know that I am quite a big fan of what the brand offers. This is a 2018 model, so it's the last of the BMW 6 Series before they discontinued it. And I've always been a little bit confused to why they would discontinue it. I know obviously in 2019 they started rolling out pretty much what is the latest of the BMW generation. So they obviously did quite a few model changes and things like that. Um, but they decided not to continue on with the 6 Series. And in some kind of way, I'm, I'm almost pleased about that. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the latest generation of BMW. I prefer the 3 Series from the one before, the 4 Series from the one before. There's not a model that I think is, is better with the latest facelift, other than maybe the X3 and the X5. I do think they look quite smart. Um, but I like this era. This is still my favourite era of BMW. So in some sort of way, I'm almost pleased that such a great car finished with that era. I think they just had it all spot on with the looks, with the tech, the comfort and the drive. I thought it was all what you would want from what is a grand touring type car and uh and yeah i i love it i really do i mean the great news of it being a 2018 in this particular instance is you're actually on the lower tax brand obviously when the vehicle becomes five years old with the latest government side of uh, of guidelines with it they're all on a singular base rate of tax so you've got this great three litre straight six twin turbo producing 313 brake horsepower, so it's no slouch with a great MPG, and it's 180 pound a year to tax. Obviously, previous generations of the 6 Series, so before 2017, or October 2017, they would have been in a higher tax bracket. I think they were more like 360, something like that. Um, so you get the lower tax, and it's also a Euro 6 compliant engine. Annoyingly, they are things that we have to think about in this day and age because they are expanding new led zones in cities. Fortunately, it's not come down towards me yet uh, down in Devon, um, but I imagine it will be there at some point. And also, if you did have this with the Euro 6 engine, you can take it through city centres and not have to worry about any kind of low emissions slash ULEZ kind of charge. Um, and you still get, as I say, 313 brake. That's paired with this eight-speed ZF gearbox. I, I've ranted and raved about it in various different videos of mine. As I say, if you're familiar with the channel, go back and watch those BMW videos because I just love this gearbox. They paired it in the Range Rover Sport as well. That was an eight-speed ZF. I just think it's the best one out there. Eight gears, work seamlessly well. You get fantastic performance as and when you need it. There's no kind of hesitation between any of the gears. And you still got that eighth gear, which rides relatively low revs at reasonable speed. So you can sit on the dual carriageway slash motorway. And in such a big lump like this, with a great powerful engine up the front, you can still achieve that 40, 42 miles to the gallon. BMW's figures will tell you they'll do 50, but I'm not convinced, I've, I've not seen it. And, and we always take their MPG figures with a pinch of salt. And again, being the last of this model, it came with the latest of the BMW tech of the 2018, which I think makes a big difference. I've got this like kind of digital dash. I'm not gonna call it a virtual cockpit because I think there are other manufacturers that do that and they do a cracking job of it. The, the Audi ones, for example, have a fantastic virtual cockpit, but it still has this nice digital dash. This particular one has the heads-up display, and the heads-up display is a, a really cool feature to have, so I've got it displaying information on the windscreen, so I don't even have to look at the nice digital dial that I've just told you about, but it tells me a speed limit display, tells me my speedo, and if I just change the, the, the kind of radio station, things like that on the steering wheel, it comes up with that kind of information on there as well. So the heads-up display is a really cool thing. I've always liked the iDrive system. I compare other manufacturers' media systems to the iDrive, that's how much I rate it. This nice big screen, the LCD screen's lovely. And, uh, and this, again, being the later one, it does have the touchscreen functionality. 
I don't like to see fingerprints and stuff all over it, so I just use the iDrive controller down here. It's got fantastic menu layout. It's got subheadings on buttons, just very easy to use. I used to work for BMW before that. I was never really that fussed about the brand. I thought they obviously had the iconic BMWs, which no one really, if, if you're a real petrol head type person, you're always gonna have a BMW that you like. But when I started working for the brand and thought how good the tech was and how nice it was on the interior, the build quality and everything like that, that's when I started to really kind of fall for it. And, uh, and it's still very much the case now. I, I sell lots of lovely cars, well I seem to be, or deem to be very lovely cars. And, um, and BMW always is up there with the, uh, with the interior kind of wear quality and everything like that. Um, so the iDrive system's a, a big bonus for me. And again, being of this era, my favorite era of BMW, you still have physical buttons down and around with the, uh, the dual climate control. You've got dials to change your temperature, buttons to change your fan speed, your heated seat to button. I like that fact. I don't like the fact that it's all going to touch screens on the, uh, on the later models it may change in time these things always come out as a concept of a bit oh you know that's new that's different um so i may well change my opinion but as it stands right now i think this is my favorite era of bmw i've got a later x4 in that's a 2019 so that is the later model of an x4 and it drives well the tech inside is very nice but it doesn't hit the same way in this kind of era this is i think as i say my favorite the seats are lovely big and comfortable, got nice wide bases and, and you feel like it's almost hugging you, um, which is a great feeling to have when you're obviously doing these longer commutes. There are electric memory settings, so if you happen to share the car, you can obviously change your, your memory settings. Being an M Sport, I think it looks great. I have had a couple of SEs. They still drive ever so well. They've still got the same tech, but the M Sport, just with the slightly different bumper cutaways and things like that, they do make it look a bit more aggressive which I quite like. It's also got the Harman Kardon sound system, which is a great sound system. The BMW Advanced system, the one that isn't Harman Kardon, the one down from that, is still actually quite a good system, but obviously the Harman Kardon is that bit better, so I quite enjoy having that. It's got the power fold mirrors, it's got the soft closed doors. These are things that kind of came as standard on the 6 Series because that was a bit more of their, almost like a flagship model. Uh, it's not the flagship model because the 7 Series is, but the 6 Series was very close to it. And being the Grand Coupe, four doors, four seats, very comfortable for any of the passengers that are in here. You've got a nice long wheelbase, which kind of absorbs the road very well, especially the lanes and stuff for the drive around here. You want it to be able to handle it, but not to be so soft that you can't kind of have any fun in the, uh, in the corners. This particular one has also got an additional extra of variable damper control. So with my two buttons down here with sport and comfort, I've actually got what they call a comfort plus mode and a sport plus mode as well. And when you change it and the, the dynamic of the car will change, I've just put it into sport mode. My nice digital dash has all like the red, very minimalist kind of dials. I've already felt the steering's got heavier, the throttle becomes responsive and the suspension will stiffen up because it has that variable damper control. The basically computers tell it, right, you've got to be a bit stiffer in the corners and bits. So that's quite a cool thing. And then Comfort Plus, which is absolutely glorious to have on those motorways. It just makes it so it's so kind of wafty, um, which is something that is really quite hard to achieve in, in, a, in a saloon type car, Grand Coupe type car. So, um, so to having that variable damper control is really quite, really quite a game changer. Um, but even the standard stuff is, is very comfortable. It's very, very good. So we can also talk about how this vehicle has worn. And I feel like this one's kind of justified to do that because albeit a 2018 and the last of this era of BMW for the six series, this particular example has done, I'll tell you now, 100,700 miles. So this is actually one of the, the higher mileage 18 plates out there and to me I think it's cracking value because it's done those miles but it has been really well looked after it's got a full BMW service history which is all stored in the iDrive so you know it's legit which is great and it can tell you what you've uh, you've had done um, so it's got a full BMW service history only recently serviced this year and um, it doesn't feel like it's done those kind of miles at all. Nothing's particularly warm bad. The buttons are all still in great order. The door cards, the seat bolsters, nothing's kind of indicating it's, it's had a hard life at all. 
other than obviously on the speedo you can see how many miles it's done it wouldn't worry me and doesn't worry me in the slightest to be honest i think as long as it's been maintained it's had one previous keeper the mot history is really quite clean but nothing in here indicates that it's done a hundred thousand miles at all and i really think that holds testament to the build quality of what a bmw is again it's another reason why i really like this era because the the leather still feels plush the steel wheel still feels nice and fresh and it's done a hundred thousand miles i mean i imagine it's probably on those longer journeys up and down the motorway and stuff like that but even the front end it doesn't look like it's got many stone chips or anything like that but you obviously have to allow for the odd mark here and there on on any used car but i think this is just cracking value for whoever's going to buy it because it's done a hundred thousand miles but it's got a beautiful service history all the way through and it's i've got it up at 18995 and i think what a lot of car for, for 18995 you've got great tech great comfort a good mpg it's all ULES compliant and it has worn incredibly well i would always advise obviously that they keep that service history up if they don't go back to bmw because i like to see it on the iDrive, it, it certainly helps when i'm buying cars to see it on the iDrive. you can find a really good specialist that still has all the tech and everything you're not paying main dealer prices but it still has all of the service history going onto the iDrive system so i think as if you were to buy this kind of example of any kind of bmw that's worn very well and got a, a great service history you've got a cracking car for for absolutely phenomenal value in, in my opinion i mean i know i'm bound to say that because it's on my forecourt but the reason i chose to buy it and the reason i feel comfortable selling it is because i really have a testament to bmw's kind of build quality i don't think i'm going to have many issues with it and if we do i've got warranty companies and and we, and we put it right um so when buying used cars these days it's not unusual for a car to have these kind of miles with the kind of jobs that people have you know going up and down the country and and and, and doing it as long as it's maintained and and kept well i think is absolutely great news for anyone who's looking to buy a car so i really hope you enjoyed the uh, the review of the bmw 6 series you may find i'm quite biased because i really do enjoy the cars i love how they drive i love how they look i love the tech in this particular era so yeah it's um it, it's certainly one of my favorites out there it's one that it just makes me want to drive across to Europe, you know, it makes me want to catch the Euro Channel and just drive down to, to Germany or Switzerland or whatever it may be, because I feel like I'll have tremendous fun doing it and no real worries about the uh, the drive of doing it either with the, the, the reliability side of things. So yeah, very much a favourite of mine. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I've just gone over a thousand subscribers, so thank you to everyone who does. And, uh, and I hope to see you for the next one. Thank you. Bye.